Hey everybody. Um, so we're going to talk about trends and whether you should follow them, whether you shouldn't, what trends are good to follow, what trends aren't good to follow, etc. So it's going to be a pretty simple video, but I think this is stuff you have to think about if you want to kind of give it a go at running a leather craft business instead of just a leather craft hobby. So a lot of things we're going to talk about in this video are currently trendy, but you have to remember that like any other niche, Leathercraft has trends that come and go. So while a minimalist card holder might be a very trendy thing to make today, if we go back to the 60s and 70s, everyone was getting craft tool kits and making tooled pouches and bags. These bags would come in a kit. You would get some stamps. I have some stamps right here, actually. Some of these are original from the 60s and 70s. And you would just, it was less about cutting out the wall, uh, the bag and more about the decoration making a fashion piece. So it's important to understand basically that in this video, we're not going to trash talk anyone. The craft is whatever you want it to be, however you enjoy it. And obviously we love all these trends because we have all this stuff in our shop. And I promise you, we didn't buy any of this just for the video. Um, but it's important to remember that trends, when you're already established, trends can be a fun way to stay relevant. They can be, be a fun way to experiment. They can be a fun way to keep things fresh. But if you're building a new business on a trend, you're building it on a very shaky foundation because once that trend dies off, you don't have anything to fall back on. So to, in this video, we're just gonna kind of run through some of the popular stuff um, and talk about how we feel about it. Um, positive, negative, indifferent, and using our experience, having seen a few waves of trends in the last 15 years, um, where we think things are going to go. So the first thing we're going to talk about is mirrored edges. Um, a big trend right now is to sand, 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 sand your edges and then use tokenol or some sort of burnishing liquid to get them very, very shiny. Now, a couple years ago, really just what, 2018, 2019, the trend was actually more leaning towards that a customer doesn't care as much about a product being hand stitched or having nice edges as they do just a product being made out of good leather. But over the, um, over the pandemic, I would say, a lot of people came in and started doing beautiful edges. Now, there's nothing wrong with these. I think they're gorgeous. Um, but I think the, the, the main thing with this trend that I feel, at least personally, is that you want to make sure that if you're just getting into leather, that you remember that this is a very nice way to finish something off. But if you have limited time, it takes a, long, a lot of that. So one thing that you can do is do something like use a clear gloss edge paint finish. Now, what this will do is it'll give you that nice gloss, but it'll give it to you in 10 minutes with not including dry time. But with dry time, you just set the piece aside and you go and do something else. That allows you the time to go and really learn how to make other things. So if you've only made card holders because it takes you a couple hours to do the edges, if you use something quicker like a clear gloss edge paint, then you'll have time to go and learn how to make a bifold, learn how to make a long wallet. Now, if you enjoy making card holders with gloss edges, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how you're enjoying the craft. And I think the main thing with this whole video is to understand that none of these things, liking any of these things is not bad. We don't think any of these things are bad in the craft. It's just when trends come and you come into the craft, you can see that if you're new as it being the norm. And these are things that weren't the norm a few years ago, and they probably won't be the norm in a couple of years. But there are things that are passing through that are very popular right now. And it's important to know that if you don't really prefer them yourself or if you don't have time to do them or if you want to do other things, it's okay to not do all of these things because you see a lot of other people doing them. So marble leather is very in style right now and we love it. These are two panels by our friend Melissa at Dad Hands. And to be honest with you, I'm framing this. I'm not even using it because it's so beautiful. Um, but this opens up a broader conversation because this opens up a conversation about materials in general. Now, a few years ago, cork wallets were really big as a sort of vegan alternative, even though a lot of the cork products have petroleum in them and etc. But that's besides the point. Um, materials will come, there are trendy materials that will come in and go out. And it's up to you to decide whether you're going to feature them in your product line or you're going to play around with them or you're going to maybe learn how to do them so you can hop on. I think they called it in the gold rush, selling the shovels. So the people digging for gold were the ones following the trends and the ones selling the shovels were the ones that were actually the ones making money because they were providing the materials to the people that were trend seeking. Get it? Kind of, kind of, kind of that sort of vibe. So with marbled leather, it's beautiful. I love the stuff that's made out of it, that it's made out of. I love the stuff that ma people make out of it. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> um, but obviously this is a very seventies vibe. It's come a few times in the past few decades and you 
would I want to build a whole business on this? I think it would be risky because this specific look is not going to be in style forever. It's very much a trendy look. That's not saying I don't like it. I love it. Um, but if you wanted to start a strong multi-year business, um, you would want to be careful that you also offered other leathers. Now, the conversation this opens is a conversation to always exploring for new materials. Um, I had, I, there's a very well-known leather worker in New England named Frank Clegg. He makes beautiful bags and he's pretty well known for the minute he hears about a nice leather, he'll get on a plane and fly to the tanner and check it out. So for example, we have some of the Newbury leathers line here that just came out. So it, you got to follow me because I know it's going to sound kind of weird, right? But linking these two together is fairly easy because this is a material that has kind of developed in recently in the last two or three years, people started making marbled panels and people started using them and the colors are different. But the concept is the same. When you have a new tannery come in and the name really isn't well known and it doesn't have the sort of the um, reputation that a, an older tannery like Corween has, um, you could be one of the first people to grab a small piece, test it out, and maybe start offering some of your products in it. That's also another way to stand out by using tanneries that not a lot of people use. It's a double-edged sword because you also don't get the immediate name recognition of the material you're using. But going to our next point, um, if your design is good, if your, qual if your craft is good, if your quality is nice, people are going to trust you to have tested these new materials and they're going to think that it's really interesting that you're one of the first people to have these leathers available. These Newbury leathers are a great example. Um, Buckle Guy just came out with them a couple months ago. We've been using them in videos and they're just gorgeous. This is their bison. This is their crazy horse. It's a nice pull-up leather. Um, they're all chrome tanned but they're, mu they're very stiff so they don't act like a normal stretchy chrome tan leather. This is their South Street which is kind of a um, almost this it's very similar to Chrome XL but it's got a little more body to it. And this is a great way to, the same as the marble leather, it's a great way to expand your horizons and materials, but you have to remember that it's not just the crazy stuff. You can go on the search for lesser known tanneries or lesser known ma um, you, hardware makers, hardware manufacturers that are making really nice stuff that just might not be fully known yet. And that can be enough to separate you from your competition. So that leads us from materials into products themselves. Now, like we talked about right in the beginning of this video, um, product trends, what people make out of leather, have gone all over the place in the last thousand years, really. Multiple thousands of years. But in the last hundred years, if you look back to pre-credit card, and then when, the cre when credit cards came out, you went from large gentlemen's checkbooks to billfolds, which were folded wallets, basically, to things that held credit cards as credit cards were available, and now you're seeing more air tags and, and phone wallets and that kind of thing, because a lot of stuff is just on your phone. Now, of course, you're always going to want to cater to, if you, and this is business only, if you want to do it as, a, as a, if you're just looking to be a hobbyist and make crafts, make whatever you want. And as a business, make whatever you want. But as a business, your goal is going to be, just like you're driving on the highway, you're going to want to find the lane with the least traffic so you can get where you want to go the quickest. We're all on the same, tra we're all on the same road, so that doesn't mean that you're not going to be making card holders, you're not going to be making bifolds. It just means you're going to want to find a way to have a unique voice in making the things that will allow you to build a sustainable business in a, an efficient fashion, basically. Um, so for example, this is a very basic card holder. Is it nice? Yeah, it's great, but making something like this is gonna be swimming upstream if you're just trying to get a foothold in the door. Making something a little bit different, maybe something like this that has a style to it, or something like this that has more functionality or a different functionality, um, that's gonna set you apart a little bit. What's gonna set you apart even more is finding a way to make a product for an underserved niche. So instead of wallets completely, say you make, I'm gonna make something up here. Say you make a, a, a leather strap for the pedals of a unicycle, right? That's a very, very niche product, but I've probably not a lot of, I mean, they probably just use regular bike straps if they do that, but <laughs> this is an example, right? If you can find a super specific niche like that, that's not served to tap into, um, my friend uh, Ben over at Crump Handmade just started making these walkie-talkie holsters and no one really makes those and it's leather. I mean, the beauty of leather is it's half woodwork, half fabric. You can make wearables, you can make structural stuff. Remember that the only limits to this material are what you're designing and making out of it and the skill that you build. Because this material, you can make boxes out of it and you can make jackets out of it. You can do pretty much anything with it. So, this is not a don't make card holders PSA. We make tons of card holders, they're great, but make sure that you have a unique voice, 
or find a different lane to go in that is underserved. And that's gonna be your most, the easiest way for you to build a sustainable business. Okay, the last thing is another material thing, but it's more of a cautionary tale than anything else, right? So, Shell Cordovan's very stylish again. It kind of comes in and out every few years. I love Shell, love Horwin Shell, I love Ricardo. We're working with Ricardo on a special thing right now. Um, this is a cautionary tale about thread. So back when I started, maybe 2000, not when I started, but I'd only been in it for about two, three or four years, uh, linen thread was very popular, and it still is. I'm not, again, if you wanna use linen thread, go for it. Um, the problem is a lot of people offer warranties with their handmade products. And what I didn't do is I didn't do enough product testing on the material before I started offering it. So I made a bunch of card wallets, similar to this one, not the same, but similar. And instead of using a polyester thread or a nylon thread, which is, this is is a synthetic and is much stronger and abrasion resistant, I used an Irish linen thread. And to no fault of the thread, the thread was great, but the only wallets I've ever really had sent back with breaking thread are the ones that were made out of linen. So if you are going to offer a warranty, if you plan on being in business for a long time, make sure you are testing both your materials and your designs long term before you're selling them to the public. So for an example, if you, this is this is a card wallet that I, Kaylina designed and I carried it for two years, maybe three years, right? Um, it, when you make something new, you can put cards in, you can say, yeah, it works. And for the most part, probably 80 to 90% of the time, you can start selling that wallet and you won't have a lot of big problems. Now I'm not telling you this because there was a big problem with this wallet, there wasn't. I'm just showing you this wallet to show you what happens. Leather stretches over time. So when you have to new designs. You're going to want to use them for a few months. You're going to want to give them to your friends and try them out. When you have new leathers that you've never used before, it's probably a good idea to make something, put it in someone's pocket. See how that leather behaves. Because what's going to happen is, as the leather stretches out, as it's used, as it gets wet, just daily wear stuff, that leather is going to bend, twist, and move, and your design might go from brand new and super viable and works great to this doesn't do this but it could just dump cards all over the ground when you take it out it could be you could be designing it in a way that does not account for movement as the leather ages kind of like the way that when you put boards on a deck you space the boards out a little bit to account for swelling and constricting as the seasons change leather is similar to that it doesn't change obviously daily with the weather but as you put more stuff in it as you take stuff out of it it'll It'll stretch out, you can shrink it back if it gets wet. There's tons of stuff that leather can do that's great for molding when we're making trays and stuff, but when you're making simple card holders that seem like a simple product to design and sell, you wanna make sure that the people that you're selling to are happy with them not just in a week, but in two, three, five, ten 10 years. Because if you're lucky, and I know a lot of you are very good crafters, we see you guys, all your work, your work and I think a lot of you are lucky, um, you're gonna be in this for a long time and you want to take care of yourself 10 years down the road when those products start coming back for repairs. So um, that we're, that's all we're gonna to touch on for today. But if there's one main thesis, I guess I can impart after being in this industry for 15 years, it's that trends are great. I love trends, it keeps things creative. And every time a trend comes through that might be loud and um, fleeting almost, like say like the marble leather, right? When a trend like this comes through, there's always a new technique or a new style that stays long term from these ideas. You have to take the loud, cool, fun stuff that may come and go fast to get those little ideas. Um, it's the same with mirrored edges. This is, some people think it's a waste of time. I do not think it's a waste of time. I think it's gorgeous when people can sand and get these mirrored edges down. Um, there are, are there quicker ways to do it if you want the look and you want to learn other stuff instead with your time? Yes. Um, but this is raising the standard of quality for $200 handmade card wallets to such a degree that those pieces are actually becoming worth that much money where I think a few years ago maybe things were a little overinflated and, and the customer wasn't necessarily getting the value that they're getting now for that money. Um, then you have these trends bring things in like we all use Tokenol now. I just started, we just started using it in, not even six months ago. We were stuck on our um, gum track, you know, hardened gum track enthusiasm. And with these trends become, come awareness for great materials like the tokenol, like shell cordovan a lot of people haven't used. Now, I know there's a lot of like shell worship. Don't feel like you have to go make something out of shell immediately. Don't feel like you ever have to make something out of shell. It is a gorgeous material um, and we love it. But 
it's not the end all be all. Um, you can make just as beautiful stuff out of regular veg tans and they age absolutely gorgeously. Um, I don't actually even know why I have this in here. I don't think I said much about, about it. The shell. <laughs> about shell. Mm. It's just here. Um, it is trendy right now, but it's for a reason. It's kind of always been trendy since the 1910s, really. Um, but that's the thing. With all of these trends come new creativity that tends to stick after the trend passes. So it, it's easy to kind of see something that's a little bit different and jump on the bandwagon of, oh, I don't like that, or I'm not going to waste my time doing that, or it's going to be fleeting. But you have to remember that the creativity behind it is what is what is usually the driving force behind the innovation in any industry, leather included. Um, and so, yeah, so I just thought it was a, it'd be a cool video to make, given our experience, given that we've seen kind of, we've been around, it makes you feel old when you're, you're around long enough to see trends come and go multiple times. But, um, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it for this video. So, so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, there's a link in the description to so the Newberry leathers, to some of the materials we use. Uh, you can check those out. Our patterns are down there too. And we'll see you in the next one.